So do you remember what you wore? Did I wear Grateful Dead or tie-dye stuff? No, you wore a bathrobe. Oh. You don't remember that? <laughs> no. That's my friend Carl Solomon. He and I have known each other since probably 2007. My name is Tim Polary, and I'm interested in people. Some folks might know me for my work in true crime, having hosted the Missing More Murray and Crawl Space podcast for years, but this is a much different kind of show. This is about my friends and their wild lives. Season one of Life Of will feature my friend Carl Solomon and his life of acting, music, and drugs. I just want to see some of these roles you've played. Thank you. So Black Sabbath member, head groupie, uh, Cecil B. DeMille's chauffeur, gang member, peep show voyeur, hospital orderly, bookie, dead soldier, Starbuck bus driver, poker player, prison inmate, rabbi, dad. So these are a ton of different kinds of roles. Um, drunk guy. Do you ever get? Yes, like, yeah, that was um, the drunk guy on um, um, the Adventures of Sheriff McLean. That's right. Yeah, Sheriff Kid McLean. Sheriff Kid McLean. Yes. You mentioned playing a homeless guy. Like, do you ever get? Like, I got a singing homeless guy. Do you, do you ever get offended if you get a call? And you're like, you know, and it's like, uh, oh, do you want to play this uh, this homeless guy or this, um, yeah, uh, you it, know, it, it, peep show voyeur? Do you, uh, no, 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 I don't. Why, how is that? Like, uh, why? because it's like money in the bank. Okay, it really is. Uh, they and it's you know union wages. Yeah, um, and um, yeah, I'm not gonna um, normally, except for tropical cocktails, I'm not gonna you know play a cop or um, right. So you're aware or any. any um, I don't play normal people. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best way to put it. So you're aware that that you're not going to get like the straight lace, like the professor character necessarily, or the cop or the FBI agent. You're going to get the the counterculture guy. Um, so that's that's interesting. I, I mean, I think a lot of people outside of the industry often wonder or like assume people would get offended. It's like if, if they get a call and be like, hey, do you want to play this, uh, this down and out or, guy? Or this, or uh, this, oh, yeah, a professional friend. I'll, I'll play this dysfunctional guy. Right, right. Yeah, from a dysfunctional family guy. But that's what your your look is, yes, right? Yes, yes. I mean, did, have, has the amount of work you've gotten increased since you've grown your beard? Yes. Okay, so that's a perfect example of what we're talking about here. Um, when you look more like something, whatever it is, doesn't matter. I say t- 2008 onward, the bulk of my best, you know, principal work for us from you and Jim Hosking. Yes. Okay, so I want to talk about the first time we met, Carl. Um, what do you remember about this? Because I, I have a, a very vivid memory of this and i'm guessing that i remember a lot more than you do it was van nuys guys wasn't it or was <laughs> that was it before the first that? that was the first thing that we worked on together yeah do we meet before that we met when you auditioned for charlie cobb's flash bash which we were producing van nuys guys right at the same time so i think you auditioned for like a movie webisode kind of thing um but we oh yes yes and i i and it's on a defunct uh website <laughs> of right. live video.com yeah that's right um, so it's, can that be found anywhere? Oh, the, the Van Nuys guys clip is on YouTube too. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. But that thing, um, where I play, a uh, a ufologist, was that what I, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. That was a show called the unexplained. That was like a show within a show. It was like a character from a different show oh. hosted this paranormal talk show. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Um, yeah, it was called The Unexplained. Um, what what did you play on that? I forget. Um, it was um, a, a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, But yes, I think but... you came in to audition for the role of Charlie Cobb, which was this kind of like music producer. And, and what did you use? There was three. I mentioned there's... Well, Casting Frontier wasn't around. Oh, this, it so. was Actors Access. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I called you um, and asked you to come in. And we were working at a house out of um, in Bel Air at the yes, time. Yes, yes. And I came to that house in Bel Air. Yes, yes. Shout yes. Out, shout out Paul 
And uh, and so I remember you auditioning for this role, and the as, as I said, it was like a a, of a, mu- a music producer and kind of like a hippie type role, and it was like you know I think coming in in character was encouraged. So do you remember what you wore? Did I wear Grateful Dead or tie dye stuff? No, you wore a bathrobe. Oh, you don't remember that? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Well, I figured I'd have a much more vivid memory of it because you you auditioned a lot. I mean, I auditioned, auditioned a lot of people, but but you but I stood out. You stood out. Yes, incredibly. Because why can't uh, why can't <laughs> everybody? F- that, that's what I ask. Why can't everybody be like Tim Pelleri or Jim <laughs> Hosking? Who knows my talents? So you were you were wearing this bathrobe, and I can't remember exactly what happened, but I think something in the scene led us to ask you to like mime like smoking weed, or 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 that was just like the conversation, and you pulled out a pipe from your bathrobe and lit it right there during the audition. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> you oh, remember that? It was now? the real thing. It was. <laughs> 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 and the best part about it is that like it had already had like one hit taken off of it. So it wasn't like fresh greens that you were lighting. So it was it was clear that like you had just smoked <laughs> the first part of that bowl, I think. <laughs> that was the detail. <laughs> <laughs> that really made me happy more than anything. Because <laughs> uh, nobody would do that. Right, right. And yeah, well, we were in a residence. <laughs> but wait a minute. I'm, but it's like, it's like this. Um, okay. It's like, did you ever see Less Than Zero? Uh, the movie, I can't remember. I don't think oh, so. Oh, it's about um, Robert Downey Jr. plays a crackhead. Oh, okay. No, I didn't see it. Well, it's called, um, he was like, what's my motivation? So like. He's a method actor, right. so we had to do crack. To know what is it like being a crackhead? Okay, so you were getting getting so in the, the thing character. Is, like the character was somebody who smokes weed, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Oh, uh, okay. Then I did the right thing. Yeah, no, you did. You, you stood came out. And now, like supposedly, and I think they're lying. Um, you know, some of the people you know, are during the Q and A. Somebody will ask, "Was that real weed?" and in, in in this scene or that. And they will deny it, but um, in um, and it, it flopped unfortunately. Uh, the Beach Bum uh, with Matthew McConaughey's latest. Have you seen it uh, yet? Oh no, I haven't seen it. Oh, well, he plays a stoner uh-huh. that has a mass following of people, and um, what happens is um, his, her, his sugar mama dies, <laughs> and he doesn't know what to do. How he could uh, be rich again, mm-hmm. or be motivated to write his poetry. So, during that, I was there at the Q and A, and and his co-star was Snoop Dogg. So, okay. like he said one time, Snoop Dogg slipped in um, a real dube, a real doobie. Oh, that's not surprising with Snoop Dogg. Yeah, but I I think that uh, that's probably right. That it's like a prop most of the time. I think. You know? Yes, yes, it's it's a prop. Uh, when I work on the sets, it's supposed to be a prop. Um, I'll tell you this. Um, one of the I, I did work on the doors, mm-hmm. and um, Oliver Stone classic. He, he let me. Yeah, I puffed right on action <laughs> on, on the real deal. This must that now that's utopia. That's Oliver Stone. But is that your but utopia? Was, uh, but um, yes, <laughs> I think the closest thing to utopia for me is just you know appearing on the set. Yeah, either these two events, appearing on the set or being at a Grateful Dead show. But now it's not. It just isn't the same without Jerry. Yeah. But I do remember from working with you, like, you know, smoking smoking on set was, or, you know, not not like during filming or anything, but. No. But, but that no, was. I would never do it. That's unprofessional. Right, right. But so you're aware of that. But, and, and you know that that is still something you wanted to do. Like you and I smoked after we shot, I think probably every time we shot. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so. Okay, so that the first time we met you, I remember me and Rob Sesternino, we were like, We need we need this guy in in everything we do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh so we didn't cast you in Charlie Cobb's Flash Bash, but we quite literally wrote parts for you in on that show, The Unexplained, and then on Van Eyes Guys. Yes. Which was a uh, a scene where you played a uh, a homeless guy, yes, who was paid by the character to uh, <laughs> to come into his apartment and pretend that you were his real dad. Do you remember the scene? Uh, yes, yes. 
God. Yeah. It's our dad. Your dad. Yep. From yeah. From way back. Oh, yeah. Kara. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's our dad. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it awesome? Oh my God, really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. yes. Oh, daddy. Oh, Kara, my Kara. Come sit on daddy's lap. <laughs> and uh, it was a very funny scene. Um, do you remember coming into the apartment? Um. Uh, <laughs> um. Yes, I think there was. But I remember like hanging around the dumpster. Wasn't I near a dumpster? Yeah, in the scene you were. I think like the character met you by a dumpster in the scene. Yes, and later on, I think the same character. Um, until I moved into um, the Hollywood Knickerbocker, I was his roommate for a month. Um, oh, Adam, Adam Sauter. Yeah, Adam Sauter. Yeah, he's one yes. of my good buddies. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's right. You were his roommate for a month. I forgot about that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, but do you, re- you so you don't remember coming into the apartment to shoot that day? Oh, it's coming back to me. <laughs> <Okay>. I, <laughs> Let me tell you what I remember. <laughs> you have a better memory I, than me. It's well, just <laughs> you're one of a kind. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I actually forgot this. Adam actually reminded me of this, but. You you knocked on the door like we were like, oh, Carl should be here any minute. And it was like four or five of us sitting around Adam's apartment, you know, shooting. We had shot a little bit earlier and we were waiting for you to arrive. And it was like, like at the door. And we're like, oh, I guess I guess Carl's here. And we open the door and you bust in. And the first thing you said was, Tim, there's a chasing me. <laughs> and you had you had like all these clothes in your hand, which was the wardrobe that we asked you to bring, and you <laughs> and you put them down, and you started explaining uh, about the landlord, Adam's landlord, who had quite literally kind of chased you into Adam's apartment. Do you remember this? No. Oh, she wasn't part of the um, the scene. No, she wasn't part of it. No. Oh, I don't remember that at all. But a lot of times <laughs> when I play homeless. Um, um, they think uh, even on the st- on the set that I'm playing homeless. They think I'm a real homeless person because right. I, I do it, re- you know, real life, very authentic. <laughs> and so the landlady thought I was a homeless guy. I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so th- those were the first and second times I think we met Carl. First, second, and third times, and then we worked on uh, Model Ball together. Yes, yes. And that Model was a lot Ball. of fun. We we you were cast sort of as like the villain's um, right hand man. If you will, that was kind of your role, uh, or the, the assistant coach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, it was uh, beer league uh, ball. Yeah, yeah. It was softball. It was a movie so was... about uh, softball. Yeah, and you, the best line I think that that I recall you saying was, uh, "Gary, I'm in a pickle." <laughs> Gary, I'm in a pickle. Oh know? yes, we're running between, <laughs> and that's the um, that last episode, the Star Spangled Banner episode. That's right. After Model Ball, that and that was a lot of days we worked on that uh, show together. Um, but it was spread out over several months. Yes. But then um, I kind of broke off separately and did uh, did something called Pan Man, which was a very independent movie, um, horror comedy about a, a demon chef who kills culinary students. Yes. And uh, and you were cast as the Chancellor. Chancellor Barry. <laughs> That's right. Yes. And so you, th- this was a great scene in the movie. Yes. It takes place around like the 30 minute mark or something like that. Um, you're you're the chancellor of this culinary academy, and and you invited everyone to uh, the scattering of ashes. Yeah, the ashes, but I had put, put in the cake. <laughs> yeah. So one of the main uh, characters in the movie had died, and uh, she was a, a chef or a culinary student. Uh, yeah, training hope. To be a chef. Something hope. Yeah, hope to live. <laughs> hope to live. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. And so uh, so you you baked you. Before the scene started, in theory, you baked her ashes into this cake. In fact, yeah, it's um, uh, the whole thing. Uh, it's on. Um, I was supposed to put a video of myself on Actors Access of yeah. of, of all the choices that I did um, on all my works. I chose that scene from Pan Man. No way. Yes, if you go to my Actors Access profile, oh, that's awesome. On the videos, I chose Pan Man. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes, well, I mean, it, it, that's my reel. Oh, very cool! It's a great scene. It's very funny. Um, let me pull up that scene. All right, so there is that's Hope. 
Yes. That's the cake that uh, yes. that you, Chancellor Barry, cooked. There you are. <laughs> There's Lisa Younger. She's hilarious. And Eric Patton. You'll see my friends. Uh, um, oh, Wendy and Jay. You remember Wendy and Jay? Of course I do, yeah. <laughs> I get all these singing roles. <laughs> the Star Spangled Banner, Amazing yeah. Grace. Oh, yeah, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Stock's dad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 Got to get that gross-out uh, vomit scene in uh, in a movie like Pan Man. So uh, that was a lot of fun. What was, uh, what was that like for you? Oh, um, it was great. <laughs> Pretty, I really like doing it. It's a pretty quick shoot, right? Yes. And, and you just kind of nailed it. You were, I don't I feel like we did one or two takes. Like, we didn't yeah. do much. Like, uh, yes. Well, you don't have um, the budget of David Fincher. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> we didn't have any budget. <laughs> yeah, no, but that was, uh, that was great. I mean, I, I love that scene. I love uh, revisiting it with you. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, to look back on, and you're you're one of the only characters that's alive. It's still in my reel. Oh, wait Good. a minute. Yeah, one of the characters. Well, your character didn't get killed. Oh, oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you're one of the it only. Didn't so um, <laughs> that means a sequel. That's right. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes, I would like nothing more than to, to do a pin. Well, man too. you could fly fly me back here next time on Life of. You know, I really blew it. I probably if I had gone to. Um, Philly instead of see you I probably would have you know you know a love interest but I'm sorry Beth I had to do this podcast I'm really really sorry <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>